Hello viewers, welcome back to DMG Chemistry Classes and myself Dr. Mahendra Guleria, Associate Professor in Chemistry and in this short video I am going to explain Hess law of constant heat summation and this law was given by a Russian chemist G. H. Hess in the year 1840 and he gave this law about the heat of reactions on the basis of certain experimental observations and now we will define this law. But before defining, if you have not subscribed my channel, then please subscribe it and also press the bell icon for the further notifications and like and share my videos. So according to this law, the total amount of heat evolved or absorbed during a chemical reaction remains same, doesn't matter that whether reaction is carried out in one step or in number of steps. This means that the total amount of heat change in a reaction depends upon the nature of initial reactant and the nature of final products and is independent of the path or the manner by which that change has been brought about. Okay, so now let us explain it with an example and in this example one mole of carbon is converted into carbon dioxide. So carbon here is in the form of graphite. So one mole of carbon is converted into carbon dioxide uh, in a single step by reacting with one mole of oxygen and the heat evolved during this reaction is equal to minus 393.5 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so this is a single step reaction. Now we will carry out this reaction in two steps and in first step we will convert carbon into carbon monoxide and in the second step we will convert carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide. So here in the first reaction one mole of carbon is reacting with half mole of oxygen giving us one mole of, uh, mole of carbon monoxide and the heat liberated during this reaction is equal to minus 110.5 kilojoule per mole understood and in the second step here the one mole of carbon monoxide is reacting with half mole of oxygen and giving us carbon dioxide one mole and the heat liberated in this reaction is equal to minus 283.5 kilojoule per mole okay and the overall reaction is same after addition of these two equations we will uh, we will have the same equation how because the carbon monoxide here and here are in opposite sides and they will cancel each other okay and we have half mole of oxygen here and half mole of oxygen here they are on the same side and will be added and after addition we will have one mole of oxygen so on the reactant side or on the left hand side we will have carbon one mole of carbon and one mole of oxygen after addition and on the right hand side or the product side we are left with what carbon uh, carbon dioxide so the overall reaction is same understood and what will be the amount of heat released in this case? So it will be equal to the sum of heats evolved during these two steps. So when we added the heat evolved uh, during these two steps, it came out to be the same. That is equal to minus 393.5 kilojoule. This means that doesn't matter whether the reaction is taking place in single step okay, or in two steps the amount of heat released remains the same okay and this is according to Hess law and we can also say here that the amount of heat released depends upon the initial uh, state of reactants that is or the nature of initial reactant because in both the cases the initial reactants are carbon and oxygen and the final products are what carbon dioxide so we can conclude here that the total uh, heat change during chemical reaction depends upon the initial state of the reactants and the final state of the product and it doesn't depend upon the path or the manner by which that change has been brought about okay so this is all about uh, the Hess law of constant heat summation in my next video I am going to discuss uh, the thermodynamic basis of this law and I am also going to take up uh, its theoretical proof. So keep watching my videos and also subscribe my channel and like and share my videos. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching.